Conversation. I love coffee. I like the coffee sweet. Coffee is kind of affiliated with internet. There is something about cafes that I always have the best conversations. It's usually something around politics. In Jordan, coffee shops and coffee is affiliated with a higher level of conversation. You tend to discuss more serious issues. You can like chill out, there's tables, you can, you know, get your laptops out, normally you have free Wi-Fi and you have like a nice social arena. I mostly go there after work in the evening. I spend hours and hours following Twitter and trying to follow the most interesting hashtags in Jordan. I think it gives every person, like everyone, a space where he can provide his ideas, um, his inputs on stuff going on. In societies uh, like ours, where people were used to oppression, people never had access to any uh, uh, outlets to express themselves, especially in the political field, which was the most censored. People used to have fear of speaking about stuff in the country. Now people are speaking everywhere. It's a space for people to be a, actually a citizen of the world. It's very easy to find someone to ask about what's going on in their country. In Palestine and Syria and Egypt and uh, even Saudi Arabia. And they all give me some insights on what's going on around them. Today I could go home, set up a Facebook event and have a protest organised for tomorrow evening. Um, I can't imagine how that would happen without the internet. The internet's allowed us to do is get images and, and, and pictures and, and stories and narratives and blogs of people who historically wouldn't have that voice. Activists and people on the ground have always felt a bit disempowered from mainstream media. Like, mainstream media is controlled by large conglomerates who have their own political agenda. Someone takes a picture, that image is blasted around the world. That's, you know, an inspiration to people around the world. Before you had the democratization of readership, but now it's of authorship, right? So now everybody can post something. Those people are actually there living it and it, it gives a personal take on to, in terms of whatever it is that's going on. The fact that you can put it on the internet, you can get support from other places and, and, and people can show their solidarity. <laughs> When it came to the Egyptian revolution, I was on Twitter 24-7, <laughs> looking at everything that was going on. Just watching YouTube videos, following the hashtag, TVs are on and you're watching Jazeera. So it was like, you can relate to this and you, you feel like you're them. People who, who you never met in your life and now you care about them. It was a feeling of anger, it was a feeling of solidarity or belonging to, the, to what's going on in there. Millions of people came out into the streets. If that's not inspiring, then honestly, I don't know what is. <laughs> I personally think the role of social networking have sort of been blown up. They are a tool when it comes to these things, but I don't think without them, these things wouldn't happen. I don't think the Egyptian people used it as a, as a way to, to, to have their revolution. I don't think that, yeah. People did not have time to check their Facebook or to, to see where to go. They were there and, and they, they were angry, and that's what happened. But what we know in the UK is that social networking sites still remain very much a very middle-class organizing terrain, and even like a young terrain, right? Historically, coffee shops were like very limited territory in terms of who could go there, right? Because Coffee is expensive at a coffee shop. It's much cheaper to make it in your house. Like the internet, you know, everybody assumes it's available to everyone. When you actually look at the numbers, there's plenty of people who don't have any access to it whatsoever. It's this whole coffee culture thing is an elitist thing, and it's only it's 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 only targets a certain group of people who can actually afford it. I might believe in the power of social media if it was distributed to the whole nation, and I, ca I cannot say that uh, what's going on online is what the people want really want, Yanni. We don't, we don't have a culture, we don't have a culture of information in Jordan.
for example, when you look for some some something online, you do not have have it in Arabic. You will only find it in English, and that's not good for the for the population. People should hold governments responsible for providing as much information online, so that every citizen can fight corruption from the comfort of his coffee shop. What makes a society democratic or autocratic is how much uh, can you affect the decision-making process. Uh, is it 0% or is it 5% like Jordan? Is it 10%? The, the higher you can, you can affect the decision-making process, the closer you get to utopian democracy. I think what makes society more democratic when people care about democracy, they care about democracy when they know why they need democracy, when they know it's really related to how they live. I don't, I don't think so, uh, the democracy is the, is the thing. Yani. America, America gave us that thing to buy or forced us to buy it, and now we have to believe that societies only need democracy. It's not the thing. We need, this, uh, we need fair distribution of services. We need people that, fear, that, fe that feel that they are equal with everybody, everybody around them. Yani. It's, uh, it's educating people about their rights and educating people about how much difference they can do collectively. The internet is really helping having those discussions online. Um, is creating more um, common needs and more common uh, issues. It's allowed people to branch out and to have friends abroad and to share ideas and, and to discuss things. Democracy is not the thing that Jordan needs. That's what I think. Services are not distributed very well, uh, money is being st stolen, and people cannot uh, name, th name the people who are behind it. I think people cannot relate and they don't care. They don't know how this will affect their life. We have money coming from Saudi Arabia and from also the US to give the regime the power to not uh, just reform the corrupt system we have. There was a big debate going on in Jordan. Do we start with what Muhammad has said, do we start with the service and then call for democracy? Or do we start for democratic reforms that will provide the services? Surely they're there to serve us at the end of the day and to meet our demands. And it's when that doesn't happen, when they don't go through with that, then that's where things are going wrong. I think it's all about respect. Everybody has to be willing to listen. Um, but everyone also has to make sure that they come forward and, and express their ideas and views. But I do think there is a real problem with even with our democratic system. So for instance, you know, take the Iraq war. The people were massively against the Iraq war and millions of people, up to two million people turned to the streets in, in 2003. And, and even then, you know, the government went to war in Iraq. I think a lot of people, especially the younger generation, feel as though there's this idea that democracy only happens every five years. And in between that, you feel like disconnected from your government. People in authority are always, are all, will always have the tendency to take a little bit of your freedoms if you don't keep uh, fighting for them. If you see injustice happening in the world, no matter who the group are, whether you are personally affected by it or not, everybody has to go, make the effort to go out there and stand up against it.